Hello, Fightful Faithful. Um, welcome to another episode of Sour Graps on Tuesday. I'm your host, Alex Pulowski. I sprained my ankle while I was sleeping last night, and everything sucks. And I'm Kate, and it is Tuesday, March 19th. It is your NXT Sour Graps post show. So you know what we say? Leave a thumbs up on this video. Pretty please. We also ask you to get in your super chats and your humper chats at humperchats.com. If there's anything that you want to talk about, you can leave a question or comment that way. And we will also remind you to subscribe to Fightful Select, where Corey Brennan has OMG so many scoops about the show. You don't mm. even know. It's so crazy. Many. So many. Um, got some clarity around whatever the hell Booker T was doing with the CM Punk stuff. Which was nothing. Uh, which, which was, was nothing. Just Booker, Booker T, T just being Booker, Booker T. T. So much more coming up on FightfulSelect.com. So stay tuned. We are full on in WrestleMania season. We've got a lot happening in AEW as we're going into Dynasty 2. So stay tuned. Tune into Sean's Q&A. That's the thing I always put over because uh, he answers a lot of questions that you guys have on those or at least tries to find an answer. If you can't get one, he'll, mm-hmm. he'll let you know. But um, Alex, mm-hmm. NXT tonight. hmm was an episode of wrestling television that happened. I think that's inarguable. That is, I that is, look, that might be a hot take, all right? Come at me. Uh, but it is definitely a wrestling show that happened. Yep. Yep. And uh, I, I also learned that Dijak is not Shaft and he is white. So... Found out a lot today. Very Man, educational episode. Listen, uh, there, there are so many problems I have with that particular <laughs> thing. None of which actually has anything to do with Dijak. I mean, it kind of does, but still, no, not like just what? The idea that you would you would cite the Samuel L. Jackson version of Shaft, the and not the original. And like that would be the that would be the immediate thing that Dijak would 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 would, 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 would not say Samuel L. Jackson. He would he would say Richard Roundtree from from all of the Shaft movies, the good ones from the 70s, not the trash and, one that came out in 2000 trying to capitalize on stuff. And also like I think we know that Dijak might be inspired by action films that are not Shaft. <laughs> also the idea that like hey, the HBK and all of his buddies backstage are like what's a current cop movie we can we can cite in this promo i know shaft didn't that come out like three years ago the one with samuel L. jackson came out in the year 2000 it is a 24 okay. year old movie <sighs> Luis, you can't no do not do this to me do not do this to me Luis. you you do not get to be this young sweet baby Luis. so young But so cultured because he likes his techers without shenanigans. And we're going to talk about all of it tonight. Because there's there's a lot that happened. Okay. Um, Yeah, there was a there was like a a, there was a shaft. Shaft sequel where like the son of shaft, but it was also Samuel Jackson, but it wasn't a direct sequel to the. First one, it was like Samuel Jackson also playing Shaft in another movie 20 years later, but... Honestly, it sounds a lot like the Leprechaun movies. It does. It does. It does. It does. <laughs> it does. I'm going to start out with Kim Gray, who said in a sour chat, um, uh, just because she's nice. And she says, uh, not NXT related, still buzzing from being ringside at SmackDown. Never thought I'd get to see Rock live. Bo got a wink and a kiss blown to him from Rhea during the dark match when he told her she looked pretty without makeup. What a sweet interaction. What a wholesome picks, thing all around. Picks with Cody. Best night ever. Congratulations, Kim Gray. Yeah, that rules. That's that's so special. What a cool memory to make with your kid. Yeah. Um, yeah, Simo Jackson's character is, is listed as like as though he is the son of the original shaft but in the year 2000 that would have made him like 30 and samuel jackson was not 30 in the year 2000 it's a it's not a good reboot um 
But anyway, Tim McFall says, uh, money for Alex's ankle and Kate putting up with horny misogynistic losers on the internet. You two and the SGS are the best. NXT, not so much. Thank you. Listen, I'll, 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 listen I'm going to let you finish uh, about the horny misogynistic losers if you want. But I went to bed last night and my ankle was fine. <laughs> I woke up this morning and I could not put weight on it. And I was like, that's weird to sleep funny. I mean, sleep funny on your neck, fine. Sleep funny on your shoulder, I've had that happen. Ankle, how do you sleep funny on your ankle? The only other thing I could think of is I've I've started sleepwalking. And while out for a jaunt, I stepped on a twig and rolled my ankle. That's the only thing I can come up with. Uh, I feel like you would wake up if that was the case, though. I feel like I would. But I like this theory. Um, I don't, thank I don't, you. Somebody, so apparently somebody says that that you can twist it. You can get it caught in your bed sheets. And then when you like roll over, it twists the ankle or something. I don't remember doing that either. That's a weird one. I don't know. I don't know. ENR says you got to watch out for that sleep. It's a doozy. It's true. It is. It is a doozy. It is. I, as far as horny misogynistic losers on the internet, I just want people to know, like, if a girl, if a woman mm. wants to see your thing, mm -hmm. she will let you know. You don't yeah. just have to be like, oh, here's some pictures. Of, like, right. she'll inform you. Right. And she will make a request. She'll yeah. probably fill out a form. And then you guys can negotiate from there. Just right. don't, you don't need to just send them unsolicited. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But people, my favorite is people that say they're going to fight Sean. Somebody said they were going to give Sean the one-two. The no. one-two! Nope, they're not. Uh, Top of Valley says, Alex, I feel you. This is very much the mid-40s. I hope not. I don't want this to happen ever again. This hurts. <laughs> I can't like, I can't do anything around the house. It was awful. Just terrible. I hope it, I hope it's better tomorrow. I don't know how I'm going to sleep tonight. Like, I'm going to sleep on the couch with my foot elevated? I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what you're going to do either. That is one I can safely say I've never done is twisted my ankle in my in my sleep meet normus says uh here's money for kate's new ankle alex's new ankle I don't know oh i was gonna say kate. i'm good i don't need i don't know why i said kate i'm reading alex's i don't know why i said kate's you know why it's because your dad has the next one That's so here's from, here's from kate's dad paul elizabeth everything sucks except the sgs happy spring spring puns spring, spring puns. puns gardening puns anything that anything that twitter patient puns anything that makes you feel good about spring it is 35 degrees here in northwestern Illinois, so I feel like very uh, spring has definitely not sprung yet here. Fair, but yeah, spring puns. Yeah, people, people were doing it in the chat, and we're good. I, I, I love I, that the chat just takes over now. Like we don't mm -hmm. have to think of something. Mm -hmm. They're like, yeah. you're starting five minutes late. Right. We are gonna just here you are. Like somebody saying that, like Rock Jesus say, I pulled a muscle in my back once from sneezing. Yeah, no, I, I cause I've, and effect. I recognize having sneezed. Oh, I pulled a muscle in my back one time. The worst, like pulling a muscle in my back, I it ever happened to me was when I was looking this way and very quickly looked down into my right. And everything in my back just completely went, nope, nope. We're about two weeks, man. That's the best I got. The best I can give you is two weeks before we're all back to normal. Because I turned my head too fast. So, but I remember that happening. I remember turning my head and all of a sudden I couldn't, I couldn't move very well. I was asleep, so I have no idea what happened. You know what I got to get? One of them little things where like you can video yourself while you're sleeping. Yeah, you do need one like, of you know. Maybe if I maybe I maybe I went for like a, a black mass and actually kicked the ring post. Oh, maybe that that's could be. what happened. That's because that happens happened. all the time. Thank you, Manda, for the dollar. Thank you. She's very nice. She's always in the M and M chat with me. Appreciate it. I couldn't even send a message for a dollar. No, you got you got to up the ante for that one. Apparently, it's a it's a thing. Um, I had a friend in college who she <laughs> she like twisted her ankle while she was drunk, and she was like, mm -hmm. "No big deal." And then when she woke up and was sober, it was a very big deal. <laughs> oh, yes, it happens. It was not good for her. Yeah, yeah. That, that did not go mm -hmm. the way that she thought that was going to mm -hmm. go. Yep. Um, uh, Vicky says, oh, wait, that's a jukebox. Um, well, we'll get to that much later. Let's start with this. Roxanne Perez. 
super heel now, just just healing it up, being the being the healiest heel that ever healed. And um, uh, they are now referring to Tatum Paxley as Lyra Valkyria's friend, and not the creepy stalker that like hung around and like popped out of lockers and stuff for like three months. So they've just decided like we're because we have a full heel to go after Ly- uh, Lyra. Whoever is hanging out with her is also a okay, and there's no nuance at all. She is just her friend now. And I thought, well, we could still be doing stuff with. I still need an explanation for why she attached herself to Lyra Valkyria. Still need that. Feel like I'm never gonna get that though. So, uh, we're definitely not gonna get that because that would have had to happen weeks ago. Mm. And she is. It's very clearly Lyra and not the title. Right. Yeah. So that one's kind of funny. Uh, she definitely was a weird, creepy stalker who hid under the table during contract signings, though. I personally, and this is just me, I don't have friends that do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not like, oh my gosh, my friend and I went to lunch. Yeah. Uh, and then she like hid under the table and ran away when I ran into someone. Like, right. that's just not how my friendships work. Yeah. But I feel like Lyra made it pretty clear that they are not friends. Right. So, yeah. Um, this is a great one. I like this one from Mr. Dark A. While Alex sleeps, the lender is part of Fight Club. Yep. Did you ever see Fight Club? I did not sit through Fight Club, no. Oh, but I, okay. I know enough about Fight Club that I get it. Because well, well, while Ed Norton is asleep, Brad Pitt takes over. Right. Spoiler alert. I love Edward Norton, too. He's great. Uh, Tim McFall says, I've woken up with bruises before. Sleep equals danger. Well, it does for me now. I didn't realize that. I got I got to get all swaddled like a like a newborn baby so I can't move while I sleep. Maybe I guess so. Help. You need the you need like the the night cam to see what yeah. happened. Cuz if yeah. you went for a stroll, I want to know. I if you hit like a black that. mass, I definitely want to know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if Ron, you wake Ron, up and, and you're like my knee hurts. I'm going to be like psycho knee from Alex Velasquez. Um, uh, Rock Roxanne defeated Tatum Tatum Paxley. It was over very quickly. She 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 tapped her out in a in a in a, in a cross face, and then she was like, "All right, Ava, you've had a week to think about it. Come out and do a completely nonsensical thing that the writers have told me that I'm supposed to think is going to happen. You're supposed to come out and give me a title that a title that used to be on the on the waist of somebody who got injured. Like when they took the title from you." Roxanne, they didn't hand it to somebody. They put it, they held it in abeyance and put it up in a match. Would wouldn't wouldn't you think they were going to do that as opposed to hand you the title? Because that's that makes you look like a dum dum. And I don't feel like you should ever make your talent look like a dum dum. I would also prefer if talent did look like a dum dum. And part of the issue is for me, I love that we have more um chats about. Yes. your sleep habits than we do anything else right now it absolutely yeah. pops me yeah, uh, the other thing is Roxanne dropped that title over a year ago at this point yeah, yeah, and there's yeah, been yeah. several yeah. title holders since so that doesn't mm-hmm. make sense and mm-hmm. also the only time that works is if an underling wins a title and they have to hand it to someone else so like also right. just learn mm-hmm. the the rules of the road yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. the law is the law and Roxanne needs to learn it but I, I'm a little bit split because I actually like the moveset accommodations that they've made with her turning heel. Like, I like her using the crossface. I think it's fun. Oh, I love her using the crossface. Yeah. Great idea. Yeah, sure. But everything else, I'm like, but you're just, I'm just, you're a face and I want to root for you. But I do yeah. like the the in-ring additions that they've made with her because I, th- I think it works for her, um, like her stature and her ring style. The pop rocks is awesome, but it's it's fun to have a little more punch to her. Um, you could also do that as a face. But I'm I think she's gonna win the title at Stand and Deliver. So I hope they actually do something with her this time around because she yeah. deserves it. Yes. Um so uh Shot Kid um says uh I had a friend in college once punch a dumpster because it was giving him lip. We found out he was very drunk on the OG vo- version of Four Loco. And only found out that he broke his wrist a few days later. I, there was a kid in college who did not last very long. He dropped out after one semester. And it was very mm-hmm. obvious why. He punched a wall and it was a cinder block wall because the dorm that I was in had a fire years before. Mm-hmm. 
Nope. And he was, Mm -mm. that wall was a human being to him. Did not go well. Uh, But wait, there's an OG for Loco? Though originally it had a lot more problems with it. Like it was like they had to like, it was, it was like, wait a minute, you can't sell this to people. It's going to kill them. And they were like, all right, how about if we like take a little bit of these ingredients we're not supposed to have in there out of it? And they're like, okay, fine. I guess, I guess it won't kill any people if you take this much out. And they're like, okay, cool. For yeah. loco walk. So the, what yeah. is it? The Panera lemonade or whatever could run. <laughs> Or prime energy for that matter. Prime energy. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh so instead of Ava coming out, Lyra comes out wearing a sling and decides to brawl with Roxanne one armed. Seems bad. And then they like turn around so that Lyra's back is to the ring, and Tatum walks up and puts a hand on Lyra's shoulder, and Lyra turns around like Hey, what's going on? Why are you stopping me from brawling with this person who just beat you in a match and also is my mortal enemy? And because she did that and also is a dum dum, she got leveled by Roxanne, who took the sling off and then beat up her arm for a while. Um, and so, why do you make both people look like dum dums? That is an even better question. And I also just feel like Lyra. I don't even under. I don't understand Tatum's loyalty to Lyra. I really don't understand why Lyra would have any loyalty to Tatum. Yeah. Uh, like why she would come out here after Lyra got her ass beat. Is, is well, I mean, I, th- I, th- I think it was more like to get revenge on, on, on Rox. Because uh, Rox wasn't beating up Tatum and like have, putting her in the cross face and say, I will rip this bitch's head off if you don't come out here, Lyra Valkyria. She wasn't doing that. She was just saying, hey, Ava, come bring me my title. And Lyra's like, this shall not stand. And that's about it. So, fair enough. There we go. Uh, okay, uh, Sefa, Sefa <laughs> doing doing research for us. The original Four Loco was a twenty three and a half ounce can of twelve percent alcohol for two to four dollars. If you break it down, that's the same as five to six beers or seven shots of vodka. Considering it was probably like hundred and twenty pound college girls drinking it too, that's really bad. Yeah, that's really bad. It's bad yeah. enough. But. It's bad. Mm-hmm. It's bad. Um, uh, Lyra demands a match with, like, she's like, Ava, I've got to check you out. I was like, Lyra, I got to check you out. Says the doctor, I got to check. I'm fine. As she clutches her elbow, I'm fine. And then uh, she says, Ava, make the match. Me versus uh, Roxanne at Stand and Deliver. And the and the and the. Uh, <laughs> The, the doctor's like, I mean, if she wants to do it, I guess I can't stop her. But like, <laughs> like you literally he does, he's can. Not, he's not even attempting. <laughs> she won't let him examine her. So he can't he can't say that she's got anything wrong with her because she won't let. Remember that one thing where Cody um, wouldn't let the doctors look at his obviously broken arm. So Triple H had to let him have the match. And then between making the match. And then having the match, they put a cast on it, which suggests that it was looked at by a doctor and yes. broken. And therefore, the thing that Triple H said, I can't put you in a match with a broken arm, he ended up doing anyway. Because once you make the match, you can't unmake the match. I wish they wouldn't do the same dumb stuff over and over again. Just new dumb stuff, maybe. It, if they could attempt new dumb stuff... There was a lot of that in this episode, too, of like, oh, my God, an yeah. attack backstage. Like, very lazy tropes today. I am excited for Lyra Valkyria versus uh, Roxanne Perez in a different match. A match where Roxanne Perez isn't just working the arm the entire match and then Lyra Valkyria wins anyway. Because mm-hmm. I do, I mean, like, like, even if she wins it the whole time, like doing it because like I I beat a weakened Lyra Valkyria doesn't prove anything, but that's she's a heel now, so she's supposed to win by underhanded means all the time. And I just you know what I want to see? Wrestler A at a hundred percent, wrestler B at a hundred percent, no interference, go. That is the optimum wrestling match. How often do we get to see it ever? Rare. It's rare. They got to do something with it. So, 
It's my own thing. I understand. Uh, no, that's a very fair thing. Uh, usually it would be like, look, you either have an injury or you're in the raven's nest. Usually it's both. Pick one. Uh -huh. yeah. um, but I think Roxanne goes over at stand at the liver. I mean, she might, or they might bring her up to the main roster. I don't know. I don't know. Shot Kid says, uh, I was in college when Four Loco first dropped. <laughs> Seeing people simultaneously that drunk and that amped was both frightening and hilarious. <laughs> I, too, I was so. was uh, was in college. when I was when in a... I don't know if this was consistent, but it was a it was a it was a jungle juice era mm. in, in my day. Ah. Which was like, hope you trust these frat guys to put a bunch of vodka and Kool-Aid in the same container. I did not trust those frat guys to no. do that. So I no. Not, that was not for Ju me. Jungle jungle juice? No. No. Roofy juice. Um <laughs> no, so uh <sighs> The Alpha Academy is back in NXT, Kate, and I, I listen. Why is my main question? We are currently doing a thing on Raw with Maxine, where she's in a locked in a feud with um with Candice LeRae uh, over whether or not she belongs here, and we're, that's going to continue for a while. Um, and I thought maybe they were actually going to like low key write her off TV because she, she's so embarrassed by this whole thing and then send her to the performance center for real, but she's just accompanying Otis who calls her my dove like three times tonight. And that's three times too many and Tozawa and they are here. Um, and yeah, this, this version of alpha Academy very much not for me. Um, uh, uh, I, I'm assuming Chad Gable would make it more palatable, but he's not allowed to accompany these guys because he's doing another thing where he's not the, the comedy get bit anymore. He's very serious. He's deadly serious. So he's not allowed to be on screen at the same time as these guys, but they are here interrupting, uh, a Noam Dar and metaphor segment where, um, I can't wait to get my hands on that trick Williams. I'm going to beat him up. And uh, Lash fanning herself in the back says, yeah, I can't wait to get my hands on him too. Wait, no, not like that. I mean, also to beat him up. And then and then here come the, the Alpha Academy with Otis has his arm are currently around Maxine Dupree, referring to her as my dove and also hitting on Lash Legend while he's standing next to Maxine Dupree with his arm around her. I don't understand why this is even happening. Because... That's a super baby face thing to do. Yeah. Uh, look. <clears throat> Lash Legend has it down bad. Okay, she's got bad for Trick Williams. Yep. I get it. Mm -hmm. Looked very nice in a sparkle outfit today. Looks Listen, like a star. I I I uh, I fully get that she has it. Uh, she is uh, down bad for the trick. Yeah. Um. Uh, what I don't like is how they are directing her to to indicate that to the audience, because it is oh, it is a bit sure. it's a bit over the top, just a scotch. You know what I mean? It is. I mean, the metaphor always are, but yeah. but also yes. Um, Otis and Tazawa. There's a few things I don't like about it. Yeah, including what you said. But the first one is. I feel like it dilutes the Good Brothers return a little bit. If you have another main roster tag team that just wasn't doing anything mm -hmm. come down here, it doesn't feel like their special attraction coming down with all this experience, acknowledge, etc. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, uh, okay, are you really Alpha Academy then? Because Chad Gable feels like a completely different person right. than these two guys. Like they do not feel like they're a part of the same act at all right. anymore. Right. And it's kind of like. Everything that I loved about New Day when Big E was active is the opposite of this, where those guys could go and accomplish things on their own, but they still felt like they were a part of the same cohesive group and they right. still were the New Day. This feels like Chad Gable is a serious techer that may or may not be helping Sami Zayn and also yeah. has a vested interest in the IC title picture and is one of the most underrated talents. And then Otis hits on gals sometimes and does funny things like that yeah. doesn't feel that doesn't feel right but when um, and when and when he does he says i am 
quite because he also he's back to being a 2020 Otis. Yes. I'm quite a jelly of a, a trick willy. Ah, ooh, hey, ah, ooh, yeah. He's back to doing that shit, which I despised at the time and I don't like anymore uh, now. Um, but every time he men she does that stuff to to lash, she almost vomits in her mouth. Yeah. And she didn't like his advances the first time around. So maybe we can stop just perpetuating mm-hmm. baby faces openly harassing women on the show. I don't right. know. Um, um, so they are not actually there for no, for Noam Dar and company. They are yeah. there to, to look for the wolf dogs because they are of the opinion, Kate, that they should be in this whole tag team triple threat mix. Why are we not? Why are we not involved in this little qualifying business in NXT? A, because you're not in NXT. I mean, that didn't stop the LWO from being a part of it, but they shouldn't have been involved in it either. But also, I would say, because you lost in your own damn qualifying thing on Raw last night, and the idea that you would show up fresh off a loss and be like, we demand, we, we demand also, they, they lost satisfaction. It. That's what I was going to say. We demand satisfaction. They also lost last time they were here. Like, they were in NXT before, and Chad Gable picked up a W, but they right. didn't. Right. So it's like, why didn't we get a win even though we've been losing on the main roster and lost here sometimes? It's just a weird thing. Uh, anyway, so uh, they say to the Wolf Dogs that how about this? We'll we'll face you next week, the two of us, and if we beat you, then we are in the triple threat match at Stand and Deliver. Um, they don't say it like that. but um, They should. But I, I like this interplay between Braun and Baron. I like their their little their repartee, and I also like their, them being like, "You guys are amazing athletes. You're incredibly strong. You're incredibly fast, but you have no chance against us." So they're at least they're put like they're they're doing this like tweener leaning face thing. You know what I mean? They're cool. They're not baby faces, but like you know they're they're cool. But we root for them or whatever. Kind of cool. Now here's the deal with all that I see with all this. My thing is, why even do this match? Why even do Alpha Otis and, and Akira Tozawa versus the Wolf Dogs next week? You add the stip because if the Alpha Academy wins, then they're in the match, right? Um, and uh, it's like and a proving ground match, almost similar. But right. But Alpha, you Alpha, why Alpha, why Alpha Academy? Um, and and so it could be anybody. So you you do sure. this thing, but. My conspiracy brain now goes to, well, they want they want the the good the good brothers to be the new champs, but they don't want to pin Braun and Baron in the title match. Sure, they'll have they'll have the Alpha Academy because who doesn't love Otis Jay winning with his jiggles and Akira Tozawa doing fun stuff? Who oh, Akira Tozawa was me, taking the pin. Me. Yeah. I don't, I don't, but who doesn't love those guys? Um, and they somehow win because the good brothers cost Braun and Baron because it's easier for the good brothers to win that match if they focus on the chuckleheads. Of course. And then they do, and then they win, and then the champs. I hope I'm entirely wrong. The the simplest thing is they're just doing this match because they're doing the match, and Otis and Akira Tozawa lose next week to prove how great Braun and Baron are. But we already know how great Braun and Baron are. We don't need this extra thing. So that's why I'm like this. I feel like I'm 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 tr- I'm I'm doing the thing. I'm doing. There is no Carol in HR. I'm doing you are. You're in char- You're straight I'm up doing, Charlie Day right I'm, now. I'm doing the thing. Uh, well. Also, hi JW Pringle, who says, "Damn it, I'm late." How did horrible booking kid glove up this NXT tonight? Hey to Alex Kate, Papa Paul, sisters Luis, and all the SGS. I just wanted to get that in now because you're not late. There's never a wrong time to no. show up here no, on not. the NXT review. No. Um, yeah, you're you're probably right. Akira Tozawa will probably eat the pin in that. And it'll probably be a really fun match. Like that's a very fun combination of three dudes, but just showing up here, it's so weird how quickly the window closed. Like, yeah. It felt like we have all this time till Mania, and all of a sudden you look up no, and it's you do two not. weeks away. Mm-mm. And now they're just like throwing them in here for Stan mm-hmm. and the Leva. Um, 
Yeah, I'm. I I I might have to like if if the thing that I say predict happens, I might have to pop on here tomorrow while I'm on vacation next week or I'm on vacation. Be like, I knew it. I knew it. They're putting these these the Alpha Academy and the Triple Threat so they could post. But, you can you can do a backstage. You can pre-record it, and I'll pull it up and um, pretend it was uh, like that's, live that's right good. now. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I like that. I like that. Um, you know what else I like? Obafemi. Obafemi is amazing. You do? He's, he's, he's the best. I I know it, it comes as a shock to people uh, who that have viewed this show. That is brand new information. That is brand new information. Say. Nobody nobody would know that from watching any of these episodes recently. But I am a big fan of the Obafemi. I am an Obafeminist. Um, <laughs> and uh, I um. I I I really thought we were just getting what we were gonna get without all the extra extraneous stuff, but I guess they got to fill two hours somehow. Uh, so next week, um, they they're they're doing something else. But but tonight, we start out with Josh Briggs with double vest, mm-hmm. wearing a wearing a single vest. He's really disappointed me lately. Just throw on another vest, just for for me, Josh. For me, like throw on another vest. You know what I mean? It may be the first day of spring. I know it's in Florida, but here, like, forget about two vests. I got to wear a parka to go outside. It's 35 degrees. Like, so please, for me, just two vests. And that way I can call you double vest. But he has a problem with how Oba um, was, was, was think. Oba just thinks he's the biggest and the baddest and nobody could touch him. And the crowd's like, yeah, he does because he's right. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I mean, the, the, the crowd is correct. I mean, sometimes rare, I have a problem with this crowd. But like, rare crowd W right here. Yeah, yeah, rare yeah, crowd W. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, he, he uh, I feel he like Brazen... with, with, with him, with him show like smiling while he beat up, uh, like while he beat up Brooks B- Beach last week. And what is and you? I mean, I this is it. I mean, he is a man who enjoys his work. Yes. I, I mean, enjoy I, his work as well. Nice, there you go. Yeah. I too would be smiling. And I was smiling as I watched that. But if you have a single vest, like it feels like both of them are on like discovering who they really are journeys. Kind and of, I just yeah. don't want him to come to the conclusion that he's a single vest guy because it feels yeah, like no. a Feels like he's gone too far. Like that he's feels dabbling. like a betrayal. Yeah. It's a phase. I hope it's just a phase. I hope you know it's how, a phase too. And yeah, you know how all these NXT kids go through phases, and I hope this is just <laughs> usually a phase. they're goth phases. <laughs> this is this is a single vest phase. I hope he comes back to being who he really is, who Let's we know him to be. So, uh, but he uh, he he's he does he doesn't like that he was smiling while beating up uh, the beach, and um, he calls him out and like. Um, and, and here comes, uh, Oba and he's like, uh, Josh, uh, you do not know what you are getting yourself into. Like he, I, 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 I'm so, so excited about this guy. Um, but he says, um, you, uh, yeah, you beat up my buddy, uh, Brooks, but, um, every, every big guy comes up, eventually comes up against a guy who's as big and as bad and as strong as they are. And I want to introduce you, uh, to me. Uh, I am Josh Briggs. I am what did he call himself? The Man of Mayhem. Is that what he called? Did himself? he call himself that? He called himself the Something of Mayhem, and I don't know. I don't remember what it was. I was like, Oh, was it Master of Mayhem? The Master of that Mayhem. Was, that's right. I think, dude, that ain't you, man. That's 2017 Braun Strowman. I don't know what you're doing. This is not who you. You're not this guy. You know what I mean? You're. That's not who you are. You're a. You're a. You're a big redneck. In, in hiking boots. Like, that's what you are. I mean, You're not the master of mayhem. That's what Braun Strowman was. Was it man of mayhem? It was, was really, it mayhem? I am the, it was man of mayhem. My goodness. He is now he's a man. He's man a, he's the, of he, mayhem. <laughs> he's the mom of NXT. He's the mom of NXT. He is mother. We love that for man him. Man of mayhem. I thought man it was master. Um, Whatever. I would simply not interrupt Obafemi. No, I would, I would, I would shy away from doing that. I would, that would, no, hard I would not do that myself. But, uh, but, but he, he's, uh, he says, um, uh, Oba says, uh, I love it the way he just, Josh, <laughs> do not say I did not warn you. It's, it's just, he's just the greatest. He's so good. He's don't say, good. don't say I didn't warn you is some of the most like just chill, the most confident. 
Like I'm, I, I, I'm telling you now, you don't want this, but if you do, I'll be glad to serve it to you on a silver platter, and uh, and and you cannot then be upset when I murder you. Um, it's just he's it's so great. And then Dijak comes in, and then I don't know. Josh Briggs is like, "Hey, Shaft," and I was like, "This is just not. It's just not it. It's just he not." He calls him a Shaft wanna be so. Shout out to Open Femi for being a Taylor Swift uh, blank spaces mm. fan. Right. The right. Swifties in the chat will understand mm, that reference. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, I did like that Dijak kind of stood on the shit, right? Um, mm -hmm. the, that part I thought was really good of him just kind of being like, hey, I said when you were done fooling around with the dragon leaves of the world, basically, right. or whatever. Like, if you yeah. want a real challenge, here I am, was really good. And then uh, he got called a shaft wannabe. Yep. He was like, uh, I'm white. And I was like, uh, you're a yep. different cop inspired yep. movie altogether, Dijak. Thank you very much. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm very, very, very excited for Obafemi and uh and Dijak. Because Dijak's well, like I I'm assuming we're eventually getting that, but listen. So um Oba, uh, like Dijak's there. Oh, like uh, there's it. It turns into a brawl, where um, where Oba and um, where Oba is like just clotheslines, double vest over the top rope, and then he and he and Dijak have a little face off. He's gonna pick him up doing his little toss back suplex thing, but Dijak backflips out of it. They turn around, square off, and then double vest is up. On the outside, on the apron, because he got thrown out of the ring being like, oh, yeah, I am also part of this. Don't forget, I am also a third guy who was involved in this. And I'm like, okay, fine. We're going to get the triple threat, and we're going to get um, uh, Obafemi pinning double vest, and then we'll we'll get the one-on-one -on -one between Dijak and Obafemi later. Cool. But then they were like, hey, what if we put unnecessary steps in here? <laughs> What if we put unnecessary steps in, in also in here? Um, because randomly out of the blue later, Ava's like, hey, Duke Hudson, I've been noticing things with you. All of these matches you haven't been having. Um, you, you, I think you have, you, how would you like to be part of the NXT North American title discussion? Like, okay, yeah, the, yeah, the MVP, blah, blah, blah. So he's going to face um, Briggs next week in a, uh, winner of that match goes to San and Deliver. The other winner of that match goes to San and Deliver is um, Sean Spears versus Dijak. But we already know how that's going to end because we see Sean Spears watching with tented fingers backstage. <laughs> like, ah, yes, see where the violence gets you. So silly. Such is the folly of man or something. And he walks out of the locker room and jo Joe Gacy like sticks his head out from underneath a bench and he's like, ha, 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 And then he goes back underneath it. And so Joe Gacy's going to attack Sean Spears in a match versus Dijak. We're going to go to Sean Spears versus Joe Gacy. Um, uh, it, this is like, it's a little feud ski, but I also like how it's the, like, you know, I mean, maybe you don't, but um, there were way too many um, uh, villains in, in the Batman universe who could just be classified as crazy. And so, but they were all a different kind of crazy. Sure. And so this is, it feels like when, you know, I don't know, the Joker versus the Riddler decide to fight. And it's like, and eventually it's like Batman's going to have to deal with one of them, but they're just two different kinds of crim criminally insane. Like Joe Gacy is completely off his nut and, and, and Sean Spears uh, uses Sun Tzu or whatever to like <laughs> give, give a monologue to you before he sets in motion a pendulum swinging back and forth. It's going to chop your head off as that water drips out of that bucket. And in about two and a two and a three quarter hours, I'll come back and you'll be decapitated here on the, but I have got other things to attend to, namely the policeman's ball. <laughs> like he's one of those guys. So uh i really like this version of joe gacy so much this is by far mm. my favorite work of his he's nailing every beat of this yeah uh 
But you know, Alex, I gotta say. Yeah. If your shaft is more of a wannabe. Mm. If it doesn't, uh, if it mm-hmm. doesn't. Yeah. If it's not like as big and bad as Obafemi is. Right. You know what I yeah. mean? If it doesn't have yeah. kind of the same snap. Sure. That we were getting. Uh, right. There's something that can help you go from being a wannabe shaft. To- right. Is your sex life stuck in developmental? Well, get ready for a call up with bluechew.com and the code FIFL. Same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but how about this? No awkward in-person visits, no trips to the pharmacy. It ships straight to your door in a discreet package. But let me tell you, your package is not going to be discreet when you use Blue Chew and the code Fightful helps to give you that confidence, that performance to take you straight to the main event, if you know what I'm saying. When approved online by one of our physicians, it just arrives straight to your door. You're not going to have people nosing around with what you're doing. And right now, you get your first shipment free when you use the code Fightful. Go straight to the top, if you know what I mean. Memorable performance. High spot, you know, whatever other innu- innuendos you can think of, bluechew.com and the code Fightful. Um, uh, uh, the obligatory, uh, shut your mouth. I'm just talking about Blue Chew, I believe, is what we have to do there. That's the sure. Idea. No, that makes sense. Song. Um, uh, this is the good thing. Jambeard says, the real question about Sean Spears is, what is his role in the Dijak Detective miniseries Ooh. with the Gacy brothers? And I like this a lot. I feel like he's more of a Hannibal Lecter guy. You know what I mean? Like he's the one. He's like. I mean, yes, but also no, because I would. That's the last movie I could ever okay. sit through. But I know, he's, I know. But of he's Hannibal he's Lecter. cerebral. He's the guy who quotes stuff. He's the guy who like w- maybe early in the film. He's the guy that like he goes to like I I need to find the guy who kidnapped my daughter. You you knew it all about him. Blah blah blah. Like you you know like like ah Detective Dijak. Yes. Uh, what tell me tell me about your dreams like it, it's one of those things i feel like he's mostly one of those one of those things. i see that um so uh anyway um we um <laughs> uh jambeer says stroman was the monster among, among med wardlow was mr mayhem now we're just man of mayhem monster um monster among men mr mayhem i think we just, just throw them all together into this one guy tag team yeah. That's fine. Um, Jambeard says the die jack is an eye patch away, away uh, eye patch away from being OG Nick Fury, not the Samuel L. Jackson one, the original one from way back in the day when he was a white guy. Um, I don't, I mean, I don't, I think David Hasselhoff played him in some movie. Okay, I'm almost positive. Very fun. David Hasselhoff played the OG Nick Fury a long ass time ago. Um, so. Axiom Nathan Fraser defeat uh, no quarter catch crew. Once you saw that Miles Bourne was in there, you kind of knew what was what was ap- happening. Uh, Axiom and Nathan Fraser are very good. They are very fast. They are uh, taking the pin next week, maybe either them or LWO. But yeah. probably uh, they need a tag team name because they're a tag team, right? They gotta mm-hmm. they need to make something feel more cohesive. They have a really cool entrance, except for the ten percent that is not cool. As we pointed out several times, right. mm-hmm. they're a bunch of fun, man. It would be cool. The tag team division doesn't feel like it has a lot of shape right now. I feel like with the Good Brothers coming down, that'll probably be really good for this tag team division because it felt like they lost some heavy hitters with the Creeds and LWO and the people Sorry. coming in. That's not what I went to do at all. I wanted to do this one. Yeah. If you've ever watched the original MacGyver. The character of Murdoch from the original MacGyver. That I'm is in. absolutely who Sean Spears is in this universe. And I, yeah. Rovan, you have you and I. We are synergistic. We are the same. We are the same. You and I. We are the same. You and I. Um, this is a. This is a. This is a. This is a comment aimed directly at all of my the pleasure centers of my young of my young brain. Like I, I watched every episode of MacGyver. I thought it was the coolest dude in the world. He was the coolest dude. MacGyver. Oh man! Uh, Rovan, so is do you also have a mystery sprained ankle? Maybe MacGyver could get to the bottom of that. All I need is some duct tape and some wire cutters. I'll be fine. It'll be perfect. I'm just wondering. Also, thank you, Ashok, about Justin Fields, the accidental chat that got pulled up in Russell Wilson. I'm. 
looking forward to winning two more games because of those moves. <laughs> You know what they say? If you got two quarterbacks, you got no quarterbacks. Hey! So, they, they, they I mean, that's that. that's the closest that we've had to one in a while. So, um, uh, actually, uh, Nathan Frazier wins with the Phoenix Splash. God, he gets so much velocity on that thing. He really does. He like, really does. This was a fun match. Like they're they're really good. Yeah. They're and they're a fun duo too. Yeah. Um. I. Uh, um. I, I really like them. I, I wouldn't mind seeing them be the, the, the guys that like just keep chasing, keep chasing, keep chasing um, uh, the good brothers once the good brothers are champion and eventually beat them. I mean, it'll take a while and a few, a few opportunities, but like you could, you could easily make them into a really, really great fun, like consistently booked, almost getting over the hump, you know, the way DIY were for the longest time before yes. they finally became champions. We haven't seen one of those in a while in NXT. I think they could be really good at that. So, I agree, and I feel like Nathan Fraser was kind of presented that way before they did that weird heel turn that didn't really work. Yeah, like he had that plucky underdog thing, and yeah. I, I think he was good at it. Like I wouldn't mind seeing that kind of come back in a tag team situation. Um. So. Uh. Listen, I I'm not. Sometimes you just shouldn't ask people to do things on camera that they are bad at. And f with Von Wagner, he is he is he is pretty good at throwing small people a great distance. He's not as good at it as Obafemi. Well, nobody he's, is. He's pretty good. He's a six and a half, solid six and a half, maybe even a seven out of ten at picking up a guy and throwing him a long distance as long as that guy is very small. Yes. You should have you should have him do that more. And you should have him act on camera less because this backstage thing captured by anonymous where he's to be like stone. Come on. I did everything you asked. I stone, but no, I didn't mean it like that stone stone. Don't leave. Like you're just waiting for all of his lines and stone being like, I I I took my beating like a man, but then you carried me off like I was a baby. <laughs> I feel like this was a direct response to the internet's response of how Von Wagner rescued Robert Stone. I don't think Robert Stone. I don't think this was this was a this was the uh, going to happen. And someone was like, "That was a really weird way for um for Von to carry him out. Like even if he had thrown him over his shoulder or something, it would have been fine. But like the the carry it was very carry strong. Yeah." Very carry. Oh yeah, that's yes. It was very uh, newly wed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, this was not good. Robert Stone did a pretty good job with it, though, uh, of being like, I didn't even care that much that I lost. I cared that right. you emasculated me. Yes. Uh, feels on par. Uh, mm -hmm. So, but yeah, I don't. I yeah. don't really have like a lot more than that. So. Um... <clears throat> So Ruka has her first match back. She um, does. I'm, I'm I'm happy that she's here. Um, I uh, she um, they were pushing her pretty hard, so they're, they're they've got some some plan for it. She defeats Brindley Reese, who comes in and does clapping push ups, and she's got Malik Blade and Anderson O'Fay, who again had one of the best NXT tag team television matches I've ever seen. Since then, they've been squashed by the Good Brothers, and now they're like sidekicks to a girl who's going to lose 85% of her matches. And I feel like they didn't capitalize maybe on the buzz they got off that amazing tag team match in the way they might could have, you know? Yeah, that was silly of them to, to have no follow-up plan for that. Kind of feels like they didn't expect such a great match of them, which is a, a great message to send to your talent. Uh, yeah. The Brindley Lee Reese is pretty funny. Like she's she it's a weird little thing that they've given her, but she's good at it. And it also gives uh, them something to do. Rather, they went from being like not believable personalities to kind of not really having an identity to now that they like at least have something to interplay off of. Mm -hmm. But they should set up. This is kind of what I mean about the tag division is that. When you have the Dusty Classic, 
And the things that you keep setting up are random people thrown together, people that are together so that you can then break them up. You're missing out on the opportunity to set guys like Malik and Idris up right. for things. Uh, you could say that about Nathan Fraser and Axiom too. Like there was not really follow-ups. And that's why I get so frustrated when we have tournaments that don't set up stories outside of this team one, because there's so mm -hmm. many opportunities to do that. Uh, right. So I'd, I hope that they get more consistent quality reps sooner than later, because that was easily the best match that they'd ever had. Me too. Oh, um, Cyclo saying that it should be Malik and Idris who are in the Alpha Academy role next week, which I would not mind at all if they had not been squashed by the Good Brothers and said that you had them squash, I don't know, two random jobbers like Javier Bernal and some guy we've never seen before because he's on level up. If or if the, they if had more had the, time to be like, we were not ready for that fight, and then they get maybe, four more sure. wins. But 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 you can't do that in that in the time period they have. So at, at the time I said, just have them squash some jobbers. Why are you having them squash these guys? These guys are great. And then they could come up and be like, Why aren't we in this tag team qualifier thing? Like, yeah, we yeah, but like but whatever. And then they get the match, and maybe they don't, maybe if you're gonna have you're just gonna have the Alpha Academy lose. Have Malik Blade and Ederson O'Fay like really put Braun and Baron to the test and lose as opposed to like the comedy guys from Raw are here. Yay! You know, like it just do the actual guys. It would be a more productive loss that way, right? Yeah. I think that's yeah, yeah true. Um oh boy. Uh Gigi is talking to Ren Sinclair. About uh, the uh, the what was it called the physiology of uh, getting a low blow to yes. the to the to the hoo ha and um, uh, and um, <laughs> and says of course the ref turned around and saw me do it he didn't see her do it so I got punished for it now I got to do the thing and then Ariana. Um, uh, shows up ariana venti she's got a, a like yes of course the referee's decision is final so here is a miss junior miss nxt in training sash you've got to wear and now we're gonna do this with gg dolan hey you know what's funny on the ww 2k24 mm -hmm. um there's like a there's like a story mode where like you as uh, you can bring in one of your characters into the world and do a story mode and it, uh, in the, the male wrestler story mode, at one point, you team up with Gigi Dolan. And Gigi Dolan gets a title match against Becky Lynch at WrestleMania and beats her. And I wonder about the casting of that particular thing, of the people who casted that. It does like, had, seem had very far away. The way, it does seem like a long time from now, maybe that would be a thing that they might do. Mm -hmm. um, but Gigi is great. And, yes. um, and I honestly, I feel like just, you know what? I honestly like the writing, the delivery uh the, the of the ariana grace character mm -hmm. i just i just i hate i loathe despise um the 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 miss nxt bullshit yeah like if it was, if it was just she was a prim and proper lady i'm fine with that and honestly you could you, you could interest me in her giving a makeover to a lot of people who aren't Gigi Dolan. If we finally get Tatum Paxley away from all this stuff with Lyra, like Lyra says, I don't want you anymore. I don't want, and she gets depressed and she's all goth girl and everything. And like, now you, I see potential in. Like, what do you, you have her do this with the crazy lady who stalks people as opposed to Gigi, who we just want better things for and have since she got kicked through a door. Like we thought that was the beginning of a huge face push for Gigi Dolan, and no, we just haven't. It's so the actual backstage to your point was pretty well written and very well delivered. Mm -hmm. uh, I they also said it was a makeover and not like a you're gonna become a pageant queen thing so right. i that's, i just I guess wish that's part that of was... the makeover so yeah yeah i just wish they had clarified that that like right. you're is it my fair lady or is it a makeover like what are we doing um 
And I agree with you. Like, uh, they... Gigi was doing some really great face work, too, with, like, her promos and talking about how much everything meant to her. And then the feud kind of got stuck in the mud because of the injury. It never yeah. really felt like it had heat. And she's just another one that faded away and i think she gets a little bit hurt by the fact that she's a face but she aesthetically and attitude wise is closer to the one way that they know how to write a women's heel in this promotion right. of um black lipstick alternative gear um like same delivery kind of thing so I feel like they don't know what to do with a face that is different, that doesn't have like plucky underdog syndrome. So right. I don't know. It, it does feel like a waste of her talent because she's very good in the ring. Uh, but it also feels like maybe they view her more as a presence that can get new people over, which she, she can't. She's fantastic in the ring. Mm -hmm. So I like this from Jambier, who's, who lets me know some things. I did not play these uh, this particular game. Jambier says, Alex, you say about the, yes, but the casting and writing the 2K games. Two, maybe three years ago, the male character storyline was him versus Samoa Joe at Mania in 2036, and Samoa Joe had a cyborg arm. Now, I don't know about everything else, but Samoa Joe with a cyborg arm is something I would pay good money to see. Yeah, no, I'm in on that. I'm in on that. We played Samoa Joe yesterday. We did. We did. Zack Sabre Jr. had them all tied up in knots. Yeah, it was fun. Um, the Tekker base. Very fun in the 2K game. Yeah. Um, so uh, Luis says this was that this Gigi the Jeej, or as it goes, uh, Georgiana, I believe is what he called it. Georgiana is that is that actually supposed to be Gigi's full name, Georgiana Dolan? Um, possibly, perhaps. Uh, anyway, uh, he said that was the start of his boiling point. And he says, and now I ask this look at what JC is doing, and look at what Gigi is doing with this in mind. All caps. Why did they need to split Toxic Attraction? A year of talent wasted. Um, I now certainly in hindsight. Yes. Certainly in hindsight, Mandy Rose is gone. The tag titles have, are gone. I know, ha, ha, no, but but at the time, Mandy, yes. Mandy Rose leaves. Have them do their little vengeance thing against Roxanne Perez, but they lose. The next SmackDown, they're on on SmackDown, and you, you just call them Toxic Attraction. They're a tag team. Have them have them do stuff like they, they could be. I mean, listen. Obviously, the tag team division right now ain't great, but they could have done stuff on the main roster together. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like there was nothing more for them to do in NXT, especially without Mandy Rose. But de debut them as a tag team on the main roster. They they would get over. Look at the, the their entrance and the gear they wore. Like they get over. It was weird. I don't know. Weird. It just felt like they had no follow up for after the blow off, and the block didn't have the heat that they wanted, which is a bummer. Right. Well, I, I just feel like it was crazy to split them up in NXT without ever trying them out on the main roster. A hundred percent. They should have just. Especially done since that. you maybe maybe I don't know because I know Sonya Deville got injured. And yeah. Still injured. But there Perfect. was that thing where like she showed up and she was like the surrogate Mandy Rose. These are my for friends because I like for a week. But easily, you could have had them back her up on the main roster, make that a little trio. Try that out. I don't know. There was something. There was something. Anyway. Um, Ridge cut a promo on Instagram about how, like, obviously I'm not ready to give up being a guy who interests people. So I'll just do – I'll be who everybody wants me to be. I was like, we don't want you to injure people. <laughs> I – I feel like I feel like if that's what if that's what you're getting, there we are. The vibes are are, are the vibes are off. off. The, the vibes, vibes are, are off. off. We are not telling you we want you to injure more people. We would like them to not make that into a storyline you have to perform on television. That's what we would like. I so. think Sean Spears wants that from him, but yeah, like yeah. we're good, just like as right, a society. Yeah. So. Uh, but. He stopped short of saying what it is that he thinks we want him to be. Also, Vic Joseph is very concerned what that might be. I guess we'll find out. Vic Joseph deserves volunteer hours for what he was doing with Booker T on the desk today. He was, he was trying. Booker T just flat out. We didn't even talk about this. American, uh, the Alpha Academy's there. And he just says he doesn't know them. Uh-huh. 
just doesn't know a team that's better than NXT and on the main roster mm-hmm. and heavily profile. Right. Just doesn't know who they are. Like, I know he didn't watch the NXT product, but I guess he doesn't watch the main roster either. Right. Man, yeah. he was... He's always rough, but tonight was also a night where he was. <sighs> yeah. Um, let's do some puns before we get to the... Let's do to, some puns. Let's do some puns. Let's do some puns. You guys doing some spring puns um, here. <clears throat> Harvestarian says lawn rakaker. <laughs> Which may be the may, maybe the leader currently. Um, that's a good because that's a double too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, insert clever Tegan Knox pun says Tegan forget me Knox. Oh, beautiful flower. Um uh Ian R says Zach Shovel Jr. <laughs> oh, Zach Shovel Jr. Yep. Um, <laughs> Dirt bullocks. <laughs> um. Uh. And uh, oh, hold on. Um. Chris Pereira says, "Judgment daylight saving." If you believe in springing forward, nailed it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and getting one hour more sleep. No, it's one hour less. One hour it is. I don't know. I don't know. Um, uh, Rick Trey Brand says Madison Square Gardening. Oh, very nice. You could the have most used famous that arena and... in the world, Madison Square Gardening. You could even have just left it as Madison mm-hmm. Square Garden. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I respect um, it. Uh, 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 Tegan Equinox. Very good. From Greg Cherry Brand. Very good. That's very good. Uh, Boris, always good to see the former UK Prime Minister here. Kind of, yeah. Boris, not really, but like, it's nice that he shows up. I mean, I'm not like a big fan of his or anything, but it's like, like thank you for taking time out of your day. Your excellence and supporting. Whatever. Yeah. They, yeah, whatever. He does say, it's spring! Oh, that's a very good one, former Prime Minister. That's really well done. Um... Uh, so, uh, Ian R says, um, Topsoil Team 2000. <laughs> you guys are the best. Just always a ZSJ and always a Techno Team 2000. <laughs> Thank um, you. Uh, Mr. Showtime sells, uh, says, Chelsea Green Thumb. Very nice. Very nice. Ian R says, CM Punk. Compost mulch punk. Ah, okay. Um, Sefa says L geranium. <laughs> That's very good. I like that one. I like that one because it's not really that close, but I knew exactly what it was. Exactly. That's yeah. very fun. You know, no, nobody's seen L geranium. Nobody's no seen what happened. We have no idea what happened to him. Like, I don't know, yeah. 10 years ago. Like, who, like, at least at this he, point, yeah. at least like 15 years ago. We have no idea what happened to him. Wild. I hope he's okay. He's supposed uh, to be Mr. an Show- annual. <laughs> Mr. Showtime says, <laughs> Mr. Showtime says, Marcho Man Randy Savage. Oh, very nice. Um, Sean uh, ENR also says Sean pruning shears. Oh, like Spears. Got it. Sorry, took me a second. Mm-hmm. Um, Ian uh, Chris Pereira says uh, floral Mensa. <laughs> That's really good. It floral is. Mensa is right up there with lawn mm-hmm. rake occur. Yeah. That's very good. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Photo says uh, Ty Daffodilliger. Oh, perfect 10. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ian R says Techno Team Tulips, and also <laughs> Jambeard says Techno Team Techno Tulips Two Thousand. <laughs> Thank you. Two different two different variations. <laughs> I'm just out here standing ZSJ Techno Team Two Thousand and Big Josh mm-hmm. and Wrestlelicious. Right, huge crossover. Mate Norma says uh, Sup Partners Sup, Daffodil partners. Sup, Daffodil Osprey. Penta El Cerro Allegra. <laughs> Desperately needed. Jericho Dandelion Heart. And uh, of course, the Gates of Allergy. <laughs> That's really good. 
<laughs> That's my favorite of the ones that you sent in. Me, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Lieutenant Colonel Photo says, April showers bring May young flowers. Oh, hey, I got one. What? Eddie Springston. Oh, huh? very nice. Very Not nice. bad. That's very bad good. Deal, I like I like that one. Mr. Showtime says greenhouse hobs. Good, good, good greenhouse. <laughs> good, 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 good greenhouse hobs. Doesn't really have the same impact, but it's a good pun. <laughs> no, it's good. Mr. Showtime says GG pollen or pollen. That's good. We'll good. accept it. It's it's better, it's better, it's better looking at it than reading it out loud because of the rhyme thing, but I like it a lot. Um Tom LaValle says uh, Jazir Tech Nix. Nix the sneezing. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, Jim Pringle says Mandy had a brown hair phase. Look what happened. I don't even know. Is that a pun? It's, it's in with the puns. I'm not really sure even what that is referenced to, but yeah. Um, Meet Norma says uh, flower graps. That's us. Uh, and and uh, the nation of pollination. <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> um, ENR says American Snapdragon, Brian Danielson. Very good. It's my favorite type of suplex, too. So double points for you. And uh, followed by a half hatch. Alpha Bill says weed osprey. <laughs> Le Lieutenant Colonel Photo says Easter egg hunter Hearst Helmsley. <laughs> It was a journey, uh, Mike, but we got there. Michael Dammit says Chelsea Greenhouse. Very good. Chelsea Greenhouse. Give it the Samantha Urban treatment. <laughs> Manda X331 says Queen Anne's Lacey Peterson. Queen Anne's Lace. It's a kind of it's a kind of flower, I believe. I think. I, think I just didn't know that. That is that is on me. Mm -hmm. That is on my breath of flowers not being wide enough in my knowledge mm -hmm. base. Um, this is this is my favorite. Jacob Fatulip <laughs> from Lieutenant Colonel Photo. Jacob Fatulips. Thank you for your service and thank you for this pun. Um, now we get uh, the we get the family with uh, um, we, hey! Hey! we get, we get the, the family. Envelope. Hey, this is yes, me. So I'm out here. This is my new friend, Luca Crucifino. We brought him into the family. That big brain of his. Got a law degree and a sociology degree from Duquesne University. Shout out, Duquesne. Also, I don't know what he's going to do with the sociology degree, but that was just the thing he decided to do. I don't know. Maybe he got, he got more into debt, which is why he decided to join the mob to pay off the student loans. Hey. um, He, um... He he keeps bringing up how he's you know the guy who makes things move around here. He's the Don, blah blah blah, and then he uh, says the to, to um, Ilya Dragunov, you know, um, that means he's going to beat him, and blah blah blah. And then Ilya Dragunov appear, appears on the Titan Tron, um, and uh, and uh, he's he he uh, here's you know what I need now. I mean, obviously, I needed it anyway, but I just I. Obviously, I need a Julia Dragunov versus Pac match. Obviously, I need that. But separate of that, I need an Ilya Dragunov, Pac, Tony, Tony, Tony off. Uh, because they both did the Tony, Tony, Tony. And then Ilya Dragunov was Tony, Tony, Tony. Um. I, uh, I, I mean, listen. You're a simple I man. I'm, I'm, I, need, I need a Tony, Tony, Tony off. That's it's a fair I mean. one. Um, um, but so uh, <clears throat> this is where um, it, Tony D'Angelo informs both Ilya and also Stax that Stax will be taking on Ilya Dragunov next week. And I wanted Stax to already know that. Because otherwise, it feel, feels weird that Tony just sprung it on him while he's standing in the ring. And if Stax did not know that, I wanted him behind Tony D'Angelo's back to be scared shitless. Yes, that part. That part. 
I mean, if he knows already, he got that. He got that out of his system. Now he can be confident or whatever. Um, uh, but uh, I, um, uh, I thought it was very funny. He's like, "Oh, I am really. You got me that match. All right. That this will certainly be beneficial for my health. Like, <laughs> you have no idea what you're getting into, Stax. Why are you smiling about it? You are gonna get murdered, dude." Uh, R.I.P. Um, Stacks, he's about to join two dimes. Yeah. Um, but I here's what I thought they were going to do. Because he was saying, you don't know what I'm capable of. You don't know the things I can get done, Ilya. And so what I wanted, again, I still want this out of this feud at some point. And it's better now the way I'm thinking of it that should have happened tonight. And I honestly was like, oh, this is going to be great when he does this. Um, I wanted him without wordlessly just they know a cue from a thing he says three big dudes jump Ilya where he's sitting and the camera pulls back and we watch Ilya beat the dog snot out of these three guys by himself with the with the suit do the t- like I will see you at stand and deliver you like and they like, uh, and whatever no he's like um, um you, next time you should send more or whatever like that and have Tony be like, hey, guess you, you can't get you can't get good help these days. I'll see you at Stan and Deliver. Not if I see you first, Anthony. Like something like that. Like, give me one of those. Give me some good, like action movie vibes between these two guys. <laughs> Tony D'Angelo's losing this match versus Ilya Dragonov, but like build up the, the idea that like not only do I have these two guys who are part of the family, I have goons everywhere. And I know where you are at all times, and I can take you out. He's saying, if you even get, he said, he, this is the why I thought he was going to do. He says, if you even get to stand and deliver in one piece. And I thought he was going to do, and then the guys attack him. And then we see Ilya fight them off because he's a, he's a badass who can do it. That would have been awesome. But eh, whatever. Um, agreed. I also think Ilya needs to be more prevalent in our jukebox. I don't want to ever feel any like anybody's pressured into who they should be suggesting in the jukebox or that they must send in a super chat. Right. But based on today, I feel like Ilya should get he should get called up. He should get called up to the jukebox based they, on your impression. Never know. I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm so excited for this match. And so I assumed so much that we were getting like trick and mellow or trick or mellow for or, or trick at least alone um for stand and deliver i i like that they went a different direction and they're like know what that's gonna be a singles blow off this will be a fun feud um and a defense for Ilya that feels very separate of the one story that's been dominating his title reign right. and i like how they built it out i like your way better but i like what they did tonight i like luca crucifino being there i like um I really, the one thing was, I have the same thing you did, of he needs to be shitting his pants when they, when he finds out. He needs to be terrified if he's finding out in real time. And I, I wanted him to find out in real time because I want to see him have that reaction. Because But I if think he doesn't have the reaction, then, he, then this finding out in real time doesn't really... Makes sense. That's what I mean. Yeah, like it, it needed to well, be big. Have him be confident until he sees that Dragonov beats the dog snot out of three dudes bigger than Stax, and yeah. then Stax is like, "Hold up, I think we should talk about this whole thing. Me having a match against it." <laughs> well, I feel like, hold I feel on. like he's, I feel like he's gonna get all revenge out on me, and I feel like that's a bad idea. I also wanted Dragonov to be like not perfectly quaffed. Like I wanted him to have just walked his way back from the bridge to wherever he is, because I assumed he did not call an Uber. Uh, so it took him a week to walk back. Maybe okay. in NXT time. I mean, perhaps. Um, remember that time where like uh, Wesley and uh, what's his face were like walking around trying to find the shaman. They were literally walking <laughs> from bus stop yes. to bus stop over over the span of weeks. My God, that was a thing. Hey, Alex. Um, yeah, I really do think that Ilya Dragunov is gonna win. Me too. But if there was ever even the slightest chance that Tony D'Angelo could win, right? I would want to know what those odds were. Oh, yeah. Yeah, me too. In fact, I would like to be informed about the odds of a lot of sports betting personally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's just me. Um, and there's only one place that I would go for such things. 
And that's Bet Online AG. Hey guys, I'm here to tell you about BetOnline.ag, the official betting partner of Fightful. It's not just an online platform, they've been trusted for over 25 years. They boast a focus on the player approach and have built their reputation on offering their clients nothing but the best. From cutting edge technology to enticing promotions and the latest sports betting odds. Whether it be wrestling, MMA, boxing, or football, baseball, basketball, or racing, anything you can think of, all major sporting events are covered by BetOnline.ag. Fast payouts, highest credit card acceptance industry-wide, safe and secure online environments, and their live betting feature allows you to bet on your favorites weekly and easily and in real time. BetOnline.ag. That's where we're going at Fightful. That's where we suggest you go as well. That's where we get all of our odds at. BetOnline.ag. Only bet what you can and please bet responsibly. So there you go. That's what's up. There you go. Bet online, AG. There you go. Um, um, so, hmm. Okay, I'm trying to figure out how to how to do this in the <laughs> in the best way. Um, oh, it's a good sign, by the way. Thea Hale decides to like apologize to Riley Osborne for the um for being weird for for the for the date and her being not for being weird. He likes her weird. He didn't like her when she was like aloof and like playing hard to get, you know. Right, not her normal weird is what I meant. Yes. But like yeah, so um it's like I'm trying I'm always trying to figure out who I am, who I was, who I'm going to be. This growing up stuff is hard. Is she is she 12? That's a that's a DJ Tanner line in season four of Full House yeah. the latest. It is you know what I mean? Like, come on. That's a that's very insulting to me that you would use a full house reference when you don't even know who Gia is, and that's been well established on the show. How many seasons did Full House have? I don't know, a lot. Okay, a lot. I stopped about halfway through. Season okay. four, I was I was still on board for season four. Like Ma- Mich- a- Mich- oh Michelle God. was Michelle was still doing the "You Got It, Dude" as her only line of the entire show. That's what that's when I that's when I was still watching, and then I aged out of it. Okay, I feel like you should. I feel like everyone should know who Gia is. All right, fine. but uh, yeah, she's in her, she's a young Hold gal up. in her twenties. DJ Tanner was the oldest daughter of the Tanner family. Gia was somebody's friend at a school. That's different. It's an entirely different thing. Man. Uh, d- no, d- you should know DJ over Gia for sure. You should, but you should know both DJ and Gia. Uh, but you're you're right in that Thea Hale is a young lady in her early 20s and not at the high school dance. But that's right. how this whole here's thing a, is written, which makes me want to barf. I Here's the thing. I'm not saying she can't feel that. Of what it is to be like going from like this becoming a young adult is a thing we all feel. What sure. we don't usually do is say it out loud in this manner. Man. This growing up stuff is hard. Like nobody says that unless they are 14 saying it to their dad during a during a talk during a very special episode. You know what yeah. I mean? That's all That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and like I don't know. I don't um, like her being treated. My thing with, with Thea Hale too is like she acted this way and now she's back to being the way that she was. But it would be nice if there was some, and it's early in it or whatever, but like if there was some development in that instead of just flipping a switch, like bad girl, no, I'm a good girl again. If she like learned something or changed or grew in some way from going right. there right. to to get back to being herself. Right. Um, but instead it was like, ah, oh, shucks. Yeah. Really blew it with Riley. Um, but uh so this was a fun little pre-tape because um Riley's going out for his heritage cup match. Right? Yes. And um and they're like, Oh hey, let's go. And they like take they like they they walk out of frame and they're obviously in the way, way, way backstage. They walk out of frame for Less than a second, and they're on the ramp. 
They're yes. with Riley. And I'm like, I just, I feel like <laughs> that was very funny to me. Uh, just the spatial relations of that. It was pretty um, But um, so Riley has a match versus Drew Gulak. Gulak is the person who is, because now they do like the, the, the basically they're free birding the Heritage Cup. The, yes. No, the no quarter catch rules or whatever they call it. So Drew Gulak has the match versus Riley Osborne. Riley Osborne gets the first fall with a, a um, with a shooting star press, and then Gulak gets the second fall with, I believe, a sunset flip. Um, and uh, and then during a commercial break, JC Jane and Jasmine Nix with uh, seven Ys and four Ns or whatever it is, a, a Z. There's an X. I don't know. Um, they come out and they're just standing there and Thea Hale loses her mind. And so when they were like, okay, she's going to be back, go back to being Thea Hale. I'm like, oh, so she has to get back on cocaine? That's a bad thing. That like, in order to go back to being the old me, I got to go and get an eight ball? Like, that's, that's, not, that's not a good thing because she immediately loses her mind. And, um, and they have to hold her back. And then she keeps doing it. Like J C Jane and Jasmine X are just standing there, and she keeps having to be held back by by Duke and Andre Chase. And then she chases J C Jane through the ring, distracting the referee. <clears throat> Jasmine Nix with four Z's and I don't know. There's a Q in there. Um, can can like wing dings. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, I've got with wing dings. <laughs> um, but she's able to like help Drew, Drew Gulak reverse a suplex, so he uh, ends up like landing on top of, um, on top of uh, Riley Osborne and getting the pinfall. And so they are. Uh, Thea Hale is so angry about this um, that she goes to. Um, to Ava and says, I need, I need retribution, not T-Bar or Mace or whatever. But, uh -huh. but she says, I, I need to get my revenge on them. She's like, you know what? Jasmine Nix is going to have her first ever match next week. And it's going to be against you. And Thea Hale's like, yay! And so we're going to Thea Hale versus uh, Jasmine Nix. Um, <clears throat> H in there. Um, and, uh, and then that's, that's, uh, that's, so we're going to, we're going to get that. Uh, also, uh, in the parking lot, poor old, oh, wait, hold on. Here we go. Luis, just let the techers effing tech. That's all we want. Uh, well, we we got to talk about this. We do. Because... I mean, like, like, listen, here's, match is one half teching and the other half stupid after school special thing. So I never expected them to, to to allow Riley Osborne to tech. Like he's he for all he's 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 a male cheerleader who can do a shooting star press. That's his thing. He's not a techer. Like if this no. if the heritage if the heritage cup was actually techers teching and had ever been, because here's the deal: my kingdom for a guy who's the champion of the heritage cup who doesn't punch a guy after the bell in round two. Because we've never gotten that. We used to be a proper country, is all I'm going to say, Alex. I'm saying, perhaps, well, I don't know if we did, because this the last time there was a tech, uh, 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 a Heritage Cup champion who didn't blatantly cheat, it was being contested in a dark warehouse in England. Maybe that used to be a proper country. We never did. The good old days. Around the tournament, though, it wasn't as bad. And when it first got here, it wasn't as bad. But it is. So frustrating to me, not just because of techering, not just because, like, if you have Drew Gulak plus another person, you owe it to that other person and the crowd and the world to let him, Drew Gulak, bring the best out of whoever he's in the ring with. That's yeah. number one. Number two to me is that the Heritage Cup should be about the Heritage Cup and not this carny sideshow. Right. Number right. three to me is it's too much going on. You mm -hmm. already have like this whole separate set of rules with the Heritage Cup. You already have the rounds. You already have these things in place. 
And that is so much of where the story is and should be. And then when you add all the distraction bullshit on the side, it's just way too much happening. It needs to be thing. clean and simple, and they never the, let it be. The problem with the Heritage Cup rules is the rounds mean that you should, like, like where well, there are boxing rounds, you want to have a guy in your corner who can give you some water to swish around in your mouth and spit out and give you some give you some tips on, on what your next strategy for the next round should be. But in HBK's NXT, having anyone within 50 feet of ringside means there's going to be interference. So, like, that's a problem. Like, you, the, I, I would think, let's if you're going to do it, do it, but, but have, like, nobody allowed at ringside like they did with the Continental Classic. You know what I mean? But, like, it's, it is a very odd thing. Honestly, honestly, it's it's very, very frustrating to me because when it first showed up and we weren't getting this so much, right. it was so refreshing because it felt so different from everything on the show. And now they've just made it everything else on the show. And it was like my favorite thing. And now it just feels like everything else on the show. And I don't need House of Torture on here. I don't need a bunch of interference about something that is inherently already its own competitive thing. Like I get that enough in New Japan. It's all I get in New Japan of lately, and it's annoying. And I would like the techers to be able to tech, and I would like I would like the thing that felt distinct about the Heritage Cup to shine through, and we don't get that. Kate, Alex, I'm gonna have to call you on this one. You can't be for like letting the techers tech and then being super pro Noam Dar as the Heritage Cup champion. Yes, I can. You're not allowed to do that. Yes, huh? I am she, a hypocrite, she, but I like okay. it. Fair enough. You win. Um, <laughs> but uh, I don't, I just love Noam Dar. I didn't love the way that it was booked right. under him, especially yeah. with the rest of the metaphor. Yeah. Yeah. But when he's doing um, the Noam roller and stuff, yeah. Yeah. it's awesome. Um, Jam Beard says Big Josh would treat the Heritage Cup with respect. Uh, well, Luis tells us you say it as a joke, but this is true though. Matt Bourne was a hooper, so I mean, but if he's coming to the ring with two bears, right? They're going to be booked to interfere. <laughs> bears in his corner would be great. Yo, if <laughs> I would take back everything I said if it was bears in the corner, just just bears mauling Lash Legend and Jakara J- Jackson, oh, just. No. Just or just a, a leg flies past the camera, just awful. Or like they were in real life, they're too stoned to do anything, so they're just a mental Here, chess here's the piece. Deal. Like if Matt, we could get Matt somehow combine Matt Bourne with the Chase U, then we could get Cocaine Bears. You know, we Maybe. watched that movie, and when I say that, I mean you watched that movie, and I did this. Mm-hmm, you did most of for that. a lot of it, but mm-hmm. I I like where your head's at. Yeah. Um, the beach is sad again. Uh, um, and uh, he's he's he is he is mid reaction to losing his match last week right now. Like I thought it was bad when people would lose a match and then 50 minutes later on the same NXT, they'd walk into the locker room clutching their side and all sweaty and be pissy. Like he is pissy about the match he lost last week right now. And, but you um, don't like the interview format in New Japan where they talk to you right after. Make no, no. it make sense, Alex. What I love is I love Fallon Henley like c- catching up to him. Hey, hey, I just wanted to make sure you're okay after your match last week. Thanks, Fallon, for getting around to it eventually. <laughs> Send the dude a text. You have his phone number. You were like a trio for a while. Send the dude a text. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure you're okay after your match seven days ago. Are you all right? You good, He's bro? Like, no, I'm not all right. You you seem to be doing okay. The Briggs is moving on with his life, and I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just done with this place. I'm like Brooks being called up. What are we What are we doing here? I was like this is the thing is the last time somebody said um, I'm done with this place, I'm leaving was Wesley, and he was gone for five months. And they just showed up again. So who knows what they're gonna do with with Brooks Jensen right now? Uh, the world may never know. Quite frankly. We don't. Um, but then immediately Kalani Jordan shows up and she's like tying her hair up in a bun. She's gonna beat the hell out of Kiana James and, and Dizzy Dame. She's like, I mean, I'm looking for you, Kiana James and Dizzy Dame. They're the ones who jumped me last week. As though everyone needs that information now because we did not know that at the time. But 
uh, Fal is like, hey, you helped Thea last week. Would you help me with this? Sure. I like helping people. Or basically is what Fallon Henley says. And then later, um, uh, JC Jane and Jasmine Nix with – they're an F? Jasmine Nix and, um, uh, and, and Izzy Damon and, and, and Kiana James are all like commiserating – being mean girls about various things. And then JC Jane and Jasmine Nix leave. Um, and, uh, and then they get attacked by Kalani Jordan and, and, and Fallon and beat up against one of those uh, garage doors. that makes a lot of noise when you bang up against it. Um, and uh, most, most backstage fights happen around one of those doors. That makes a lot of noise. When you bang I would up against simply it. not stand in one of those doors. Yeah. And I also would not hang out backstage. <clears throat> Yeah. Nor in the parking lot. I would fight mm -hmm. my match. Yeah. I'm not a good teammate. I'd get mm -hmm. my shit and I would leave because mm -hmm. this happens all the time and there's never anything done about it. We are getting overkill on the backstage attacks. Like perhaps even, even more than usual. It's a bit much. It's a bit much. Um, so we're probably gonna get that tag match next week or the week after. I don't know. I mean, we're gonna get that on a get that on a stand and deliver pre show. I don't know. I don't know what we're good with that. Stand and deliver. Okay, um, the last two that said they would leave were Cora Jade and Wesley, and they both came back and then immediately got injured. So, all right, so 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 I would like to send so my uh, so so I would like to say get well soon in five yeah, months yeah. to the beach. Um, so uh, triple threat tag team qualifying match: the Good Brothers uh, beat a Hank and Tank. Um, uh, of course they did. This was yes thing they did it was fine uh, hank attack looked okay good for them holding their own big boys against two other big boys yes, nelson months they had their yeah. own logo alex and you know who else has their own logo who's that oh that's uh, true mm -hmm. what up we have that one yeah. and then we have do we have another one we have this one too oh yeah we have Boom. i forgot about that one we have both we have both of them that's I like, like the, I like, the proper I like both spinal tap I, style one I, I i i like i like both of them a lot I like Me both too. of them a lot. I gotta tell you. Um, so uh, Nelson Muntz says, "You couldn't pay me to watch any match featuring the Good Brothers, so here's some money for having to endure that." Luis says, "Hey, respect the machine gun." Well, I mean, you can respect one of the Good Brothers, but the other one is just out here cashing checks. Um, good brother. Yeah, I, I I thought this is this is fine. What they're doing with them, it's it's. Yeah. It's okay. It is. It is very odd that like they're, they're they're bringing them back to SmackDown this week. To I'm pretty sure lose a match while they're winning the tag team number one contendership for the NXT at the same time. It's just a weird deal that they're doing that to me. But I'm the only one who finds that a problem. So I have a bigger problem with it. With teams like the Good Brothers that have been established and worked all over the world, that I do like, if they're coming up from NXT and losing on the main roster, I get the frustration. But I'm like, well, maybe they're better at NXT because they're at the top of the developmental than they are on SmackDown, where they're at the bottom of the main roster or whatever. Like that, I get a little bit more. But the Good Brothers have worked all over the world. Like they, they should, yeah, um, be consistent. <laughs> Like uh, Luis says, also watch Good Brothers win the match against A Town Down Under. Um, but if they do that, then they're going to lose to either AOP or the Street Profits, right? Like, because man, this this, this final testament thing was is not great, and the Street Profits have been so in the mud. I honestly don't know. I mean, I honestly, don't know. It's Triple H's gonna get he's gonna make the final testament a thing he's he's gonna I, I um uh trick williams gets interviewed we know that carmelo hayes is here he's got guys standing outside his locker room we haven't yeah, seen him all true. night but we know that's gonna happen so whatever he says some things they also they like, did a really weird cutaway where they were like like if this is carmelo hayes's locker room yeah. they were like it's time and i was like you got a whole ass cameraman <laughs> <laughs> for yep. that two seconds good yep um trick williams uh versus noam dar um uh, full of disclosure i did not see any of um i heard most of it um 
because I had to do everything in the kitchen, uh, make my, my daughter's uh, lunch, and then hobble up the stairs to get up in, in time for the, for the thing because I could not walk. Um, so I did not see most of it. Um, but I, what I did hear was them give credit to Trick Williams for a Memphis crowd saying, whoop that trick to the rock. Whoop that trick is a Memphis Grizzlies chant. Like you can't like just I I I, I hate when they lie. There's Trick Williams had nothing to do with the whoop that trick chant being sent in Memphis to the rock. Stop saying that he did. That's just a dumb thing. I don't I hate it. That's all. That's just an excuse to put the rock on NXT, like from a like no, rock well, footage. Sure, sure, whatever. Um match, match was actually really fun. Match was very fun. Um it opened with just like three big slams and OM Dar just every time getting back up, be like, where am I? And then just another one and another one. I always like offense like that. There was an enormous trick shot in this, uh, but no, OM Dar is just such a, he's so great and perfect in every way. And I love him so much. But one of the things that he's best at is just, he's a really good seller. He's a really good seller. Um, trick doesn't need the help, but helps make him look like a million bucks. This match was very, very fun. And considering that it made no creative sense for it to happen, really, like at least the in ring of it was, I, I thought, very, very good tonight. Uh, good chemistry. They're so different. And Noam is so grounded um, that it was, it was good. And they put together like a good little story, considering there wasn't a ton of overhead creative for this to, to happen. So it was good. Um, yes. Um, Carmelo Hayes, all his music plays after he, he beats him with the trick knee, but they're calling it a trick shot now. Trick knee is a great name for it. He uses the knee. There's a phrase called trick knee. You don't need to call it trick shot. That's a weird thing. Um, just call it what it was. It was a fine. It name. was a big one. It's, it was yeah. a big one tonight. So, uh, he was there. Did they, did he make out with Lash again tonight? I don't know. I, I didn't, I didn't catch that in my ear i just wondered i'm assuming i thought they were going to pay that off again but no uh no no smooching but continual uh, okay cool like um so carmelo's music hits his security guys come out but and trick is they're, they're on they're all in the apron and trick is waiting for carmelo to come out but instead carmelo is one of the security guys which i honestly thought was pretty clever I've, i haven't i haven't seen that one for a while they're all wearing the same like uh, balaclavas, ski masks, and so one of them could take off the thing and be mellow. That's cool. Uh, then they beat the hell out of him, and I'm going to prove to you, blah, blah, blah. So we, we, we're done that. We leave Trick laying at the end of the show. Um, uh, Trick versus Mellow. Uh, I feel I feel like they they want Mellow on the main roster pretty pretty soon, so we're just going to, it's going to be the way we always think it's going to be. Uh, I did not think we were getting a one-off feud between these two guys. I thought, yeah. I thought we were getting a, tri a, a, a triumvirate of matches, but instead it looks like we're getting a one-off, I think. Um, so here's my hope for Mello on the main roster. I, I hope the reason they they're not have not yet put Odyssey Jones on TV is that's who Mello de debuts with. I said this from the beginning. I said Odyssey Jones is the perfect heavy for that guy because Trick at that point was a skinny guy. He's not anymore, but at that point, he was a skinny guy. And mm -hmm. we knew yep. he couldn't fight because we watched him have one match. And we're like, this guy ain't ready for it yet. But Odyssey Jones was like, now that's a that's a heavy. So that's my hope for Melo on the main roster. I feel like those two guys would be really good together. Um, Trick wins this versus Melo and then gets a shot versus Ilya. Maybe he topples Ilya. Finally. Maybe we do that at Battleground and Ilya goes up. I don't know. But... Um, but, well, if there's yes. anything we're great at on the show, it's predicting, it's when, people predicting get called when people get called main roster. We're definitely uh, not off by like 18 months. Nope, never. That's never happened once. Uh, Vicky L says, uh, hi, Kate and Alex. Not invested, invested in Trick Mellow at all. I'm officially bored. We need a shake-up. Let's be sour. Appreciate you. I mean, they took too long. It's just that. It's just that. It, it just has been taking forever. And the big reveal was extremely obvious. Yeah. So it, it's it's certainly both performers yeah. are fantastic and they've we woven all, something decent together. It's just taking forever. 
we all kind of figured it out immediately that Carmelo attacks Trick, so it's weird that Trick didn't figure it out. And yes. we had this weird thing where, like, Lexus King said that he did, but then he was lying. Like, Well, he had to get when, his big pay-per-view loss. Right. When Trick Williams first came back after at the end of a Carmelo match, and Carmelo was like, ooh, and they just left. They they went they went to black and they were like oh we'll see you on Monday on Tuesday or whatever. Um, that was the time to start that feud off hot because Trick should have at that point knew it was mellow, and then you just did the thing you did all of that you could have you could have blown this off a deadline, or had yeah. or done the first match at deadline the second match at Vengeance and if you had to have a third for Vengeance Day the third if you had to do a third match you'd do it here and then you'd do the actual trio of matches. You, you could have done that, or you could have just blown it off at Vengeance Day because at that point, Carmelo was already a da dallying on the main roster. So just do that over there. Weird. Yeah, it did um, just take too long. It did. And if they were going to have Carmelo go up to the main roster to not really do a ton, they could have made that a part of the story. And then Trick is just doing other stuff till Carmelo comes back or whatever. So um, I do give breathing room to the fact that I think things change a lot like I, I think it has to be an extremely fluid environment oh, in NXT sure. for for those people who are at the top of the roster but uh, I think I actually like the idea of the match being a one-off because this has been so long like just do the one match really intensely and call it a day um yeah um Jim Beard says Brian Danielson versus Big Josh for the the rights of the Bears yeah, that I mean for the the Bear Cup for sure. Mm -hmm. Sean Spears, uh, sorry, Jam Beard says maybe Sean Spears is the Dolph Lundgren character from Johnny Mnemonic, which is a very deep cut, and I don't think that's necessarily quite what they're going for. But I I do appreciate the reference. Jam Beard says Steelers are about to go eight eight and one, so that Tomlin never has a losing season. They're gonna go nine seven and one. How dare you? How dare you? Um, some more puns. Um, American Snapdragon, Brian Danielson. We've had that before. Thank you, Ian. Feeling Dreepy says, grow yearly vegetables. GYV. <laughs> um, I like it. Alpha Bill says, weed Osprey. Thank you. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Photo says, Easter. Wait, well, we got these already. Luis, I can't delete things, so you're going to have to do all of them. you got to give me edit access. I don't know how you could give me that, but I, can't I can. I can help with this part of it. Um, Jambeard says, Dahlia Allen and Kenny Orchid. Kenny by, nice. God, Kenny by God, Orchid. Um, Jam Beard <laughs> says uh, IRS is Iris Rose Saffron. Huh, and MJF lovely. is Marigold Jasmine Foxglove. How lovely. And Jam Beard says um, Kenny Omega, the spring cleaner. Very nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, sure. Jesse Ozog says uh, Queen Anne's Lace is a wild carrot. With big white flowers, and the root smells like a carrot, but it looks just like hemlock. Don't eat it then. The the difference is lace has a hairy stem, while hemlock has purple blotches on the stem. Something Plato found out the hard way, because that's how he died. He ate the poison version. Um, that's bad. Yeah, it's bad. Um, Rovan says, Alex, Twitch sleeping stream when? Never. If I, if I, never. But thank you for the, the, oh, the question. Oh, man. I want to know if you just, like, have creative in your sleep or, or if you're mad. So bad. Like, no. is your subconscious just so mad at HPK? No. I, need, I want answers. Alpha Bill says, uh, Alex wrestles Kurt Angle in the dream realm. <laughs> That's what it feels like. My ankle feels like that for sure. Um, okay. We got some. We got 17, 16 minutes to get through the jukeboxes. I want to no get more. this done. No more moratorium. No more. We don't want to um, summon Sean. We do not <laughs> want. Nope. Nope. We're doing it. Um, this is. We'll start off an a, 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 a interesting one. Um, Jambeard says Gallus to sing the Digimon theme song. I. That's 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 a new one on me. Here we go. Uh, let's see here. Um, oh, good lord. Yes, there's a are there, are there better words than this. Jeez. Oh, here we go. Did uh, Digimon, 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 
they did Digimon Digital Monsters, the monsters are the champions. The digital monsters, monsters are the champions. Into the digital champions that save the digital world. The monsters, the monsters, the monsters, the champions, the monsters are the champions. Digivolve into champions, Digivolve into ultimate. Digivolve monsters, monsters are the champions. It's really hard to do. Um, but the lyrics are like that. Um, Jambeard mm -hmm. wants Ilya Dragunov to sing uh, True Survivor by David Hasselhoff. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> All right, Just, here we go. <clears throat> Dominoes falling, riot in the streets, baby, there's time. There's no retreat, there's no surrender. A devil is rising, a shadow from the past. Feeding on the flames with fire on the edge of fury. Out of time, running in and out of time. Tony, <laughs> Tony, hear the ticking Tony of the countdown clocks tonight. Thank you. Um, I wish then, your uh, eyes turned red when that happened. That would have been great. Um, Jam Beard wants Illy Dragon to sing the full house theme. <laughs> All right. What ever happened to predictability? The milk man, the paper boy, the evening TV. How did I get delivered here? Somebody, please. This old world's confusing me. Clouds as mean as you've ever seen. Ain't a bird who knows your tune. Then a little voice inside you whispers, Kid, don't sell your dreams so soon. Everywhere you look, Tony. Everywhere you go, Tony. There's a heart. There's a heart, Tony. <laughs> a hand to hold on to. Everywhere you look, everywhere you go, <laughs> Mr. Stax Lorenzo, there's a face of somebody who will murder you in the ring. Everywhere you look. Um, I'm going to say uh, that's not the ending lyrics, but I'll take it. Mm -mm. Jambir says, Alex Hot Tub Twitch stream, no. Um <laughs> Uh, so here we go. Um, Ellie's here in time for Ricky Rainbow. Um, Darby Allen singing Footloose. <laughs> foot Come broken, on. am I right? Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah that's true. Because foot's go. broken because he broke mm -hmm. it in mm -hmm. that match with Jay White. <clears throat> I've been working so hard, I'm punching my card eight hours for what? Oh, tell me what I got. Well, I got this feeling. The time's just holding me down. I'll hit the ceiling or else I'll tear up this town. Tonight I gotta cut loose. Foot loose. Kick off your Sunday shoes. Please, Malachi Black, pull me off of my knees. Jack, get back, Malachi Black. Come on before we crack, Malachi Black. Lose your blues, Buddy Matthews. Everybody cut foot loose, Brody King. Okay, um... Feeling Dreepy wants Linder to sing um, If I Could Turn Back Time. Story of her life. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, if I could turn back time. Oh, if I could Argon turn trail. back time, I would go right back to the Italian Renaissance, which of course is when I was born. Um, if I could turn back time, if I could find a way, I'd take back those words that you hurt you and you'd stay. I don't know why I did the things I did. I don't know why I said the things I said. Pride's like a knife. It can cut deep inside. Words are like weapons. They wound sometimes. I didn't really mean to hurt you. I didn't want to see you go. I know I made you cry, but baby, if I could turn back time, if I could find a way, I'd take back those words that hurt you, you'd stay. If I could reach the stars, I'd give them all to you. Then you'd love me, love me, love me like you do, like you used to do. If I could turn back time, oh my goodness! If I could turn. I back heard time. you wrote that about husband number six. 
Um, no. No, if I could turn back time, I wouldn't get married to him. That's what I'll say. Oh! Um, uh, Tiffany singing Putting on the Ritz by Taco. <clears throat> you're blue and you don't know where to go why don't you go where fashion sits putting on the ritz different types who wear day coat pants with stripes and cutaway coat perfect fits putting on the ritz dressed up like a million dollar trooper trying hard not to look like gary cooper come let's mix where the rockefellers walk the sticks or umbrellas in their mitts putting on the ritz have you seen well to do up and down park avenue on the famous thoroughfare with their noses in the air, high hats and arrow collars, white spats, and lots of dollars, spending every dime for a wonderful time. Toodles. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bandana Head yeah, says, thanks so, much to team, thanks so much to Team Kalex. Y'all are a highlight of my week and are good for my mental health. Well, you're very welcome. Can we have Braun give a dramatic rendition of the Shaft theme, please? Who's a black private dick that's a sex machine to all the chicks? Shaft, you're damn right. Who's the man that would risk his neck for his brother man? Shaft, can you dig it? Who's the cat that won't cop out when there's danger all about? Shaft, right on. They say this cat Shaft is a bad mother. Shut your mouth. I'm talking about Shaft that we can dig it. He's a complicated man, but no one understands him but his woman. John Shaft, get these Shafts. <laughs> um, Ludwig Kaiser sings Du Hast by Rammstein. Nice. Okay, here we go. Oh, this is this is oh see this is okay all right it's the it's the english version that's all i got here jam beard you hate me you hate me you hate me you hate me to say you hate me to say and I did not obey. Will you unto death doth sever, be upright to her forever? Never, never dare. I wonder if anybody just tunes in right now. No, no, yeah, sorry. No, no, I'm not, I'm not doing the German version. I'm not doing the German version. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I've, I've ruined my voice already. Now I got a bad ankle and a bad and a bad voice. <laughs> hold on. Before before we do hold on. Hello. Hello. Is it, is it, we, I think we missed last week, did we? Yeah, I don't think you were here. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm here now. Uh, Tom Lavelle. Mickey Rainbow, have they made you in, in WWE 2K yet? No. Jambeard says, um, uh, uh, Ricky Rainbow to sing the Good Brothers TNA theme. I have to say, I'm not familiar with their oeuvre in the TNA. No. Is this the name of the, the name of the the name of this song is Devil in Your Six. Got to say, I'm I love that our chat apart. is Ali Cease Ricky is here. Ali, where are you? <laughs> the name of this song is Devil in Your Six. I much prefer a Devil in Your Seven and a Half minimum. The devil ain't in my distance. He's in your six. I told, sold my soul years ago. So I could be rich. Yesterday seemed so far away with my back against the bricks in the devil in your six. The devil in your six with the devil in your six. Nowhere to run and there's no way to hide. The clip is empty and the whiskey is dry. He said, now go ahead, son. Beg for your life. 
I said, I won't go without a fight. I punched the devil square in his eyes. He went down, and I swear I heard cries. I grabbed his keys and went for the door, hopped in his jeep and headed down to Florida. As soon as I hit South 95, I looked in the rear view, and I could not believe my eyes. There was the devil sitting in the driver's side. The devil in your six, with the devil in your six, the devil in your six, the devil in your six, the devil in your six. Thank you. You've had some run-ins with the devil. Tom LaValle, well, Ricky Rainbow to sing um, Blackbird by the Beatles. I also would like Ricky Rainbow to sing Blackbird by the Beatles. Right, here we are. Blackbird singing in the dead of night. Take these broken wings and learn to fly. All your life, you're only waiting for this moment to arise. Blackbird singing in the dead of night. Take these sunken eyes and learn to see. All your life, you're only waiting for this moment to be free. Blackbird fly. Blackbird fly. Into the light of a dark, dark night. Blackbird fly, blackbird fly. But it just goes on and on. I mean, listen, you know I loved you, John and Paul, but sometimes it's just it just goes, it just keeps going, you know? You have the voice of an angel. Thank you. Thank you don't you. usually hear but like that was like the tender side of Ricky, you know what I mean? We don't usually get Ricky unplugged. Right, but you know, I'm a mystery wrapped in an enigma, wrapped in an egg roll wrapper, wrapped in a, you know, you know how it is. I do know that. All right. Well, thank you. Keep cool, Gabagools. I'm just kidding. It's me. I'm here. Hold on. I, somebody wanted me to sing. Wanted somebody to sing a German song. You know how German I am. I love the German. So here we go. We're going to sing Du Haas in German. Hold on. Du Haas. Du Haas, Miss. Du Haas, Miss. Du Haas, Miss Gefracht. Du Haas, Miss Gefracht. Du Haas, Miss Gefracht, baby. And you have Nis Gesagt. If you will. If you will, that's that's for you. That's for you, uh, all the Von Erics, because they're the, they're the only Germans I know actually. It's the Von Erics. That's that's for you, Carrie. And, you only uh, know Americans because you're an American. I, 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 I only know the American Germans. That's all I know. I, do, I all I know is the American Germans, who are of course the Von Erics, and that's about it. I just know I just know the Von Erics, and that is all. The American Germans for the yeah. American Dreamin'. That's it. That's all we do. Basically, it, it, uh, honestly, that just it. I, I, I just know that you know the thing. The thing about Fritz is um, he was a he was a fantastic uh, wrestling mind, but also a bit of an asshole. So we also have him sitting over in the boiler room, which, as we discussed earlier, is wrestling hell. Yeah, that's not so, great. Yeah, so he uh, unfortunately for Fritz, he just has to be, be over there. Maybe he can work himself up to wrestle heaven, but I do not know. We can only hope. We can only hope. He's over uh, there sitting there with uh, Superfly Snooker. Just the two of them over there just right. hanging out. We don't even give him board games. They just got to sit there, reminisce about the, about the good times and the bad times. A lot more bad times than good times. Yeah, it's rough. It's a rough one. Anyway, rough it one. is. If you, if you will. Anyway, we're going to go. Okay. I got to go back to the great beyond. Okay, bye, Dusty. Nice to see you. Ricky! <laughs> what happened? I have no idea. I, I've, I thought I lost you, and now I'm back. I don't know what's going on. I think most people are, are taking over. The Honestly, this, fe this feels like just too much. It's just too much. So Does I'm it feel like say, a drug trip of some sort? Be, uh, what was it called? Keep cool? Keep cool gabagools. Gabagools. Right. It's been a long time since I've said it. Has, it. Yeah. Keep cool gabagools. Toodles.